Mike, I don't know about you, but our sidekick's not with us today. I know, it's awful. But we are really excited about our guest. Mike, this is one of your brides as yes. well as Sharon. And Sharon's, right. Yes. And I know we're going back. She got married this summer, July of 2021. Blake, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us about all things with your wedding and planning. We have so many different topics we want to talk about, but thank you so much for being our guest. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Well, Mike, we've got a lot to cover. No, so we better get, she better get some popcorn <laughs> and something to drink. Blake, the number one thing you remember from your wedding day. Oh, my goodness. So the number one thing I remember was the first looks um, because all day I didn't get to see Alex or my dad. And I just remember that's all I wanted to do. I was like, I'm not nervous. I'm nervous about just the sheer amount of people that are going to be there. And I know he would calm me down and I just wanted to see him. So that was my favorite part. And that was like the most vivid part of the whole day. So well, from just seeing your pictures, I know you said there was some ugly crying going on, but what memories to cherish for a lifetime? Oh, I know. And it's funny you say that because the whole day I was sitting here and I was like, wow, I so I feel like I'm so in the moment. I'm going to remember this little detail and this one. I don't remember like I, I don't want to say I don't remember anything. I do remember stuff, but it's just like people tell me things and I'm like, Oh yeah, that happened. And that happened. And, um, Mike, so this is one happened. of the things we, well, Mike, this is one of the things that we talk about. You put so much time into planning this special day. And we talk about photos and video being so important. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you plan for months and months and months, but then the day comes and it's almost like a blur to you. Yes. But when it comes to photography and video, that's that's how important it is to have those things. Some people oh, say, yeah. oh, well, pictures aren't import, important to me or video isn't important. But really, it should be one of the most important things because you're going to have that to latch on to the rest of your life. I mean, I remember booking Sharon, then you, and then our photographer. I mean, in that order because pictures were my – like top two things, flowers and pictures. <laughs> well, and then, you know, there's Sharon. She's in charge of it all. So, <laughs> but I mean. <laughs> you have I, to have a good running person. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, I remember that was my most important thing. We interviewed our photographer, asked her a lot of questions. We spent like two hours on the phone with her. And then we weren't going to do a videographer. That was one of the last things we added and it was actually my dad, he got remarried two years ago and they didn't have a videographer. And he said, that's the one thing they regretted. And I mean, we didn't spend as much as you could spend on a videographer. Um, it was just a friend from my high school who was trying to start up a business. And um, he'd only done like five or 10 weddings prior to mine. Um, and I was blown away by the video. And then the video helped me be like, oh my goodness, I remember this and this and that. And so every time I look at it, I see something new or catch something, and I couldn't recommend it more. Well, your pictures, we've been looking at them on Facebook, and your pictures are absolutely wonderful. Thank uh, you. I mean, I mean, every picture is just as good as the next. And it looks like to me so many little details just in going over the pictures. Mm -hmm. Like where I want to start with this is you tell me a little bit about your engagement story. Oh my goodness. So I, I'll start off by saying I take pride in knowing everything that's going on. Like I rewatch shows just to know what's happening next. And so I don't feel like anything catches me off guard. Like I always know what's happening next in life. I'm a planner. So having no control over this uh, proposal was very hard. We'd gone ring shopping the August before we got engaged. And then he, he gave me like a six month span. So um, with our work schedules and school schedules, I really thought I had it pinned down to like a day. And I was completely wrong. Um, I had taken, we had taken like a nap and he's like, let's go for a walk in the park. And I was like, okay, but I have plans tonight. 
to go to a friend's house. And he's like, well, can I come? And I was like, no, it's girls night. Well, he had planned this night with her. So I feel like I was lied to a lot. And so. Um, but it was so worth it though, Blake. I know. Cause we went to the park and my friend from my best friend from high school was hiding in the, um, she was sitting on a bench with a book in front of her in front of this gorgeous gazebo and, he got down on one knee. She pulled the book down. I remember looking at her and being like, that's Monica. Oh, uh, Alex is on one knee. Focus, Blake. <laughs> and so uh, he proposed. I was, I mean, of course, not expecting any of it. We went to dinner where he brought in another friend from out of town and show, she showed up. So by then I was like, no more surprises, right? Like this is it. We're just going out with my friends later. And he's like, yeah, just a few friends. We're going to go out um, to a bar and blah, blah, blah. No, he was like, I have to pick up some um, drinks that I made for us at my apartment before we go. And I was like, okay. And so I'm walking up the stairs. I'm like, oh, here's Alex's apartment, introducing them. I flip on the lights and there was like 30 people screaming congratulations at his apartment. He threw like a whole engagement party. People came from um, like me County, Tennessee, Ohio, Indiana. I mean, it was a big, a big to do. That's awesome. That's and really she cool. remembers the details. Yeah. And the yeah. thought that we did do it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So he did good. He's so good. So good. Okay. Our listeners are going to be taking some ideas from that, Mike, don't you think? Well, I think that's good too for our listeners. You know, you want to try to outdo each other. So, I mean, you got to come up with other things. So that's right. awesome. And it doesn't have to be a big elaborate dinner. Mm-hmm. Just like she, she talked about the park and she was surprised. We were just taking that's a walk to the park. That was something we do all the time. So, I mean, like I wasn't expecting it. Um, Cause he was saying, you know, this is like the one time I get to surprise you. He's like, you get to surprise me with like, babies and all this so I'm, he, I was like okay guess you can have that you better one. hang on to him because he sounds like a good one I think he's a keeper <laughs> I think he's a keeper yeah. okay so so you got engaged how soon did you start planning well so we actually got engaged the weekend before COVID shut everything down so this <laughs> it was weird to us because that was the last time anybody had gone out done anything go to a restaurant the next weekend that sunday everything closed down so we actually got to see the refinery in person but we actually um picked our church online based on google google pictures (laughs) um so that was pretty we did that pretty quick i remember actually um let's see i remember talking to katie hill who has been on your podcast before Um, And she had told me that she, because she got engaged um, like two months before we did. And she'd already obviously booked Sharon. And I was thinking, oh, you know, I don't think I need um, a wedding planner. And she was like, no, just like have a phone call conversation with her. And I was like, okay. And Alex was like, (laughs) no, no, no. Like we know everything we want. And I was like, that's true. And he was like, yeah, we want a buffet, lots of pictures a Catholic church wedding and lots of flowers. And he's like, it's all, it's all we need. Right. That's I plan a wedding. I was that like, sounds so simple. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's so simple. And he's like, you know, and like 400 people. And I was like, okay, not, <laughs> no, not 400, but um, you know, <laughs> we're sitting here thinking we can make these decisions pretty quickly. We know a lot about it. And then we got on the phone with Sharon and I was like, Oh, we don't know a lot about this. And so at the end, I mean, I don't know how long we talked to her, but by the end we hung up and he's usually the skeptical one. And he even was like, okay, so we need Sharon to plan our wedding. (laughs) Well, and you know, one thing too, a lot of people, and just like you just said, a lot of people does not realize how much detail, how much work goes in to throw in that day off. Yeah. You know, I mean, it takes a lot of work. And, it, and I'm telling you, since I've met Sharon and other wedding planners that I know, I mean, they are worth every penny you pay them. Because, I mean, it's 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 mine settling for you because you don't have to worry about it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and having someone else there to be, to play you, to make sure everything goes okay, is the perfect thing to have that day. Oh, yeah. And just someone to look over your contract, make sure the wording is correct. I mean, and, you know, yeah, I knew I wanted a buffet, but where in the world was I going to get it? I didn't know. I mean, he found me <laughs> vendors and um, set everything up for us. I mean, that was my first year teaching, and Alex was traveling a lot in his job. So we really didn't have a lot of time, as much time as we would like um, to plan this wedding. So she really saved us on that. I mean, and like my parents talked, so she saved us time. My parents talk about how much time she saved them. I mean. You know, that's important too. Let me ask you this. What was your most difficult challenge since you said you got engaged the week before COVID started? What was your biggest challenge through all that? Not even with Sharon or anything else. What was the challenge that you faced personally because of dealing, planning your wedding during COVID? I think it was that we had to like, for example, like find our church online, look at pictures of that online. Then it was the, you know, we wanted to have a big wedding and, you know, no one knew when COVID was going to stop. People were postponing them a full year. Um, and even like a month or two before our wedding, my mom was like, you need to get your COVID list ready. And I'm like, no, I never made one. Um, I don't know if that was stupid or not, but I didn't make one because right after our wedding is when that like variant came around. And so it was tr a really tricky business. And so I think it was the unpredictability of COVID and the wedding. I mean, I didn't know what was going to happen. So. And she mentions about you're picking the place where you're exchanging your vows online, not seeing it in person. I can understand why she would say that's a big decision. Yeah. yeah. A big decision. Well, I know too, over the past few months or past year, I mean, every time I talk to a bride, it's like my biggest challenge was knowing if my wedding was going to happen. I mean, having to go to bed every day thinking, oh God, is this going to happen? And you're what planning, does tomorrow bring? What, what does tomorrow, tomorrow bring? Mm -hmm. And it's just, I feel for all the brides that had to deal with all that. Well, it's also vendors, too. Yeah, you know, it, it, it really affects the families, the friends, the wedding party, the couple, the vendors. It, it affects every single part of it. I remember the weirdest part of it all was wedding dress shopping with a mask on. <laughs> I mean. Oh, I never even thought of that. Yeah. So up until I tried on, I only tried on like five dresses, but I wasn't allowed to take my mask off until I thought I found the one. So, really? yeah. So you like, I never have even mentioned that. So I'm glad yeah. that she yeah. did. Yeah, you couldn't take your mask off. I mean, like I was wearing, you know, a big white dress, and I'm like, well, I don't know how this is gonna look. Can I take the mask off? They're like, not until you like basically say yes to the dress. Like until you think it's the one. Even though I'm like six feet away from everyone. I could only bring two people, so I brought my mom and Alex's mom, and like they had to stay six feet from each other. They could like it was the weirdest thing. They had to have their masks. You know what? Like as much as we talked about COVID, I don't know that it's ever been mentioned about affecting yeah. the dress shopping and two people going with you. Yeah, that's never been mentioned before. There's so many different aspects of that. So you said you tried on how many dresses? Just five. Um, but yeah, I had to sit there the whole time with my mask on. And then um, I could only take it off at the very end. And then before I even stepped off the pedestal to go take it off, I had to put it back on. Well, one thing that I saw with your dress when I was looking down at your pictures, um, and I hope you'll be okay with us sharing some of these yeah. online, was the detail Again, I'm looking at pictures, but it looks like the straps and the back, how it be down with the uh, lace, I believe. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely it's beautiful. beautiful. Very pretty. Thank you. We, um, I didn't think I was going to want a big poofy dress. I thought I would want more form fitting, but I just put that on and like, I never thought I wanted to feel, I just wanted to feel like a bride. But then I tried that one on and I was like, I feel like a bride and a princess. I just felt so special. 
um, that that one just like, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like I know people say, like I have friends that are engaged and they're like, I don't know how I'm going to pick one. Like I'm so picky. And I'm like, I don't know how else to explain it by you. Like you have a gut feeling when you try it on, like you just know. It's kind of love at first sight, but with a dress. <laughs> we've heard that we've heard something similar. Like you just know, there's no a, really a way to describe it. But yeah. this looks very flowy, like very um, statement. But I mean, this really looks. Uh, this dress obviously suits you, so you absolutely amazing. stunning. Thank you. Yes. So you mentioned about the first looks. D who did you choose to do first looks? I know you mentioned it earlier. But um, I know you were with your dad mm -hmm. and and Alex and I didn't want one at all in the beginning. I wanted to see his face as I walked down the aisle. But then um, I talked to multiple people and they said it's such a special moment. It's one on one time that you get before the wedding to talk, to let all of the nerves die down. Um, and I will say, like, that's what I remember most. I remember. Um, being up at the altar, and then I remember our first look. Those are like the two things that stand out during the day. So I don't. And I'm so glad you brought this up because it's been talked about a lot lately. Mm -hmm. The difference between him seeing you come down the aisle or the first look. And recently, we had a photographer on as a guest, and she was talking about how intimate that moment is, and it's not as much for the pictures as it is for the couple in their special day. You can't have that intimate moment in a church with 100 people or 200 people or 50 people for that matter. And I never had anybody say it to me that way. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I always thought people did it for the pictures. And she was like, the ones I talk to, I tell them to be able to relish that moment together as a couple. Yeah. Well, we're, we're sitting here looking at your pictures as we're talking to you, and I, I see that they blindfolded the groom. Is that, is that when they were bringing them, him to you? I thought that was cute. That's awesome. He's on the bus with his blindfold on. Yes, and it's, it's not actually um, a blindfold. It's one of his ties, like one of his favorite ties. Oh, okay. And he lost it. Like he had it for the, on the bus, and then he had it at the reveal but we never got it back. Um, oh. So that is something. The good news for pictures though, right Blake? Yeah, oh, I said, that's why I say I'm like, you can just remember it in the pictures. But we we blindfolded him. He was blindfolded for like 30 or 40 minutes. It was pretty funny, so. Is this down at the river? Is that where you did the first look? Yeah, um, waterfront. Yeah, that's very pretty. Oh yeah, and so it was. Did you, see, did you see your dad first, or did you see the groom first? I saw Alex first, and then Alex watched um, my dad and my first look. Oh my goodness! This is so good. Where she's hugging her yeah, dad. Yeah, that's sweet. Oh, I mean, I get my tears from him. My gosh, he took one look at me, and I about lost it. And I didn't remember if my makeup artist put on waterproof mascara or not. So I was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another thing, Green Mike, this is something that you cannot experience with your parents coming down the aisle. If they're you're, walking you're exactly down the right. aisle you're or exactly if they're right. down there, you can't have this experience. So I'm so glad that she talked about this. Um, oh, yeah. It, you can just see how much that meant to both of them. Yeah, those pictures are a thousand words right there. And the pictures we're talking about, Blake will let us share some out on our social media with the, when this episode releases too. So, so did you all end up taking some pictures together then before the ceremony? Yeah, it's funny you say that. So my biggest thing for pictures was that I wanted some outside because since we weren't doing an outside wedding, um, I wanted the greenery. I wanted the, like a nice background that just what, cause I knew we were going to get pictures in the church. I didn't want all of them there. So um, but it started monsooning the morning of the wedding. I'm talking like sideways rain. And we hadn't come up with an extra place to take pictures inside. So we were just banking on that break. And it stopped raining from like 12 to 6-ish. Um, so we got lucky. It looks like it's a beautiful day there. It's a puppy cloud. It looks beautiful. You never guess. So um, we took pictures there. And then outside the refinery, there's this white brick wall that we also took pictures in front of um i mean besides the you know getting married part the pictures with our bridal party and then alex we took pictures with 
all of us at both locations. Um, I mean, we, get that. we just got to the one with the bridal party. Mm-hmm. And so how long did you take pictures for approximately? Do you remember it all? I remember us being 30 minutes early to the refinery. So I think like, I think we had two hours for pictures at waterfront. I think we only took an hour and 15 minutes and then so we no. Yeah. An hour and 15 minutes. And then we drove there. So we were 30 minutes. No, we were early to the church and to the refinery. So, um, it didn't take as long as we thought. And we, I mean, I still still allotted plenty of time. And I think that's one thing that surprises people is when they think, oh, allow a couple hours for pictures. And they think a couple of hours. One of the things that the photographer tip, you always want to have extra time and not be rushed because you can tell you're rushed in photos if you do that. Yeah. Well, you can tell you had a good photographer too, because you did have extra time and, and, and the pictures she took or he took, I mean, they're beautiful. Amazing. Thank you. Absolutely yeah. stunning. We took, so, I mean, it was, we were 30 minutes early to the church and that was downtime. There's some pictures of us in the church, just like sitting on the ground. I got to talk to my bridesmaids for like half an hour. Someone went to McDonald's and got us drinks and then <laughs> we kept sitting there. And then we got to the refinery early and just found that happened to find that brick wall to take pictures in front of. And she loved that. So, I mean, they allow, they allow all that time, but I mean, they give you, like, I think we got like 16 to 1800 pictures back. So, Oh Oh my goodness. Yeah. And I only posted like 400 on Facebook. So, I mean, they give you so many options. So Blake, what time did your day start on your wedding? It started at eight o'clock. And what time was your wedding ceremony? 4.30. And then you did the reception following. Mm-hmm. And so you ended about? Um, 11. So I think that's really important for people to realize that it, it is a long day. And I think that's why even Sharon's mentioned about make sure you have snacks. You don't go all day without eating and things like that. But just so people understand, you start at 8 a.m., your ceremony is not till 4.30, but you're allowing yourself time not to be rushed with hair, makeup, getting ready, pictures, everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, I had, so I had eight bridesmaids, and so I had to make sure we had breakfast ready when they got there, and then um, Sharon had the best idea of getting lunch catered to the hotel, so that came and was ready for us, um, because you for for getting ready it it takes a lot more out of you than you think it is just getting your hair and makeup done and shuffling from one location to another i mean it takes a lot out of you i'm looking at these i'm hesitating because i'm looking at these ceremony pictures <laughs> just an absolutely gorgeous church saint elizabeth is very pretty in downtown louisville mm, absolutely stunning what is what's something that you remember from the ceremony I was just going to say my, my favorite part. I mean, I remember like grabbing Alex's hands right as we got there. Um, I just remember like catching looks at each other while um, Father Steve was talking, um, sitting during the homily, we were holding hands. I remember that. I remember my hands so sweaty, but, um, but it was, it was awesome. That my, the, my favorite part though is we were exchanging rings he was like, everyone remind, reminded me to put my engagement ring on the opposite hand so he could put my band on. And everyone's like, you're going to forget, you're going to forget. And I was like, no, I won't. I promise. So I remembered to put on the on the right hand. And so he grabs my right hand. And I'm like, no, that's the wrong one. He's like, no, it's not. And everyone in the front couple rows can hear him. And <laughs> he's like, no, that's the, you have the wrong hand. You're giving me the wrong hand. I'm like, no, look. And we had this like little funny exchange and we were both so like, not nervous, but I don't know. That was just like a funny little story. Mike, do you see this picture where they're getting ready to come down the aisle? Yes, and you can, she seems relieved, doesn't she? (laughs) But they seem so happy and excited. Oh, we've been talking about this for so long. I mean, we've been together five years this month and... That's awesome. And you know what? This picture, I think she's looking at her dad oh, in this yes. picture coming down the aisle. What 
gosh, again, I always say, but amazing memories to be able to look back on. Oh, and yeah. what a beautiful place to take group pictures mm-hmm. and family photos. Absolutely awesome. So did you all, what did you do for transportation? We actually did um, a party bus for our bridal party. Um, and that was so much fun. I I didn't really know what I wanted to do for transportation. I wasn't. It wasn't one of the big things. But it's actually something that I remember very vividly, just sitting with all my friends, chit-chatting. Um, we had drinks on the party bus, and um, it was so fun to be with them before the wedding and after. And then on the way, um, we just had a regular bus come get them from the refinery and take them back to the hotel. But that was um, something that even some of my friends that got married after me said, you know, we wish we would have done something like that because we just took – like actually at the last wedding um, I was in, Alex drove um, five of the bridesmaids to the venue. <laughs> so, Mike, are you getting ready to say something about transportation? No. Well, one of the things I was going to say, Blake, is you don't have the stress of worrying about if your people get to the place at the time they're supposed to. Did they take the wrong way? You know, you're together. But one of the things you just said is that's quality time together. Mm-hmm. And that, that's very special. I mean, these are your closest friends, cousins that are spending the whole day with you who came from all over. I mean, one of Alex's groomsmen, the Wednesday after our wedding, moved to Guam. So, like, these are people. Yeah, these are people that came in from all over Indiana, South Carolina, Tennessee, um, Colorado. This is time that, like, you're never going to see again. So... So really, that was a good tip to hear from a bride that, you know, it's important to uh, get transportation for your bridal party Mm -hmm. just so you can spend more time together. Well, and not we a lot of times say convenience and making sure you can stick to your timeline. But Blake said something completely different. They got to spend time together. And I think that's an important tip. No. Well, no, what I was getting ready to say before when you asked me that is because you sit here flipping through your pictures and I see... Uh, a lot of times when uh, the bride and groom cuts cake, sometimes they'll be really delicate and, 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 you know, be very nice. It doesn't look like you were too nice when you came to cut oh the cake. My gosh. About that. I catch so much <laughs> flack for this because the whole, <laughs> planning this whole wedding, Alex is like, you know, it's I, not said, laughing. Oh, well, I said, I said, don't you dare smash it in my face, like getting this makeup done. But I did that because I secretly wanted to smash it in his face. And he was <laughs> so bad. I mean, he still talks about it. Like, we'll go to weddings and he'll grab a piece and smash it in my face because he's so mad that I smashed it in his. And I mean, it looks like it's up his nose. It was, I mean, it was like up to his eyeballs. Like, he I mean, you may have to have him join in this conversation. Because oh, I, I may need to hear his take on this. I oh. will text him to come in. <laughs> okay, so while you're doing that, I'm glad you asked about this, Mike, because I want to talk a little bit more about cake cutting. But, Blake, what did you all do first at the reception? Did you all do a grand entrance? Um, we had our bridal party do entrances, and we just kind of walked in, did our first dance, um, and then a first dance with him and my dad. And then we sat down. Here he is. <laughs> Hi. So we want to talk to you about this cake cutting. <laughs> yeah, I heard you talking about it. <laughs> so that's your favorite part of the day, right? Uh huh. Yeah, she caught me off <laughs> guard for sure on that one. I mean, <laughs> he took it. He took it off his face and tried to smash it back into mine. He was so mad. <laughs> well, the photographer caught that moment perfectly. She is relishing in that moment, it looks like. Got the whole family. The whole family's in there. She set me up from the beginning. I mean, it was... I didn't stand a chance. It, yeah. And it was... I don't blame you for doing it to her at every wedding or event you attend from here on out. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, great. I, I encourage you to do so. I'm sorry, Blake, but... Hey, okay, to be fair, oh. I think he's just I mad. Was- <laughs> He's just mad because that's the only bite of cake he got all night. And we had seven, we had seven different kinds of cake. And so he's just mad that he didn't get any more. 
Well, I mean, I'm not sure he could taste it because it was up his nose and <laughs> everywhere exactly. else. Exactly. Exactly. Hey. Yes. So you're Alex, just mad you didn't think of it first, so I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, while you're in the room with us, I want to ask about a dance that was done uh, during Piano Man. Uh, Tell us a little bit about that because I, I saw pictures of that too. Oh, or a video of that. Is this the groomsman dance? Yes. That I've heard? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's something that our fraternity does. It's like the whole fraternity did it when we uh, initiated, and every time we initiate more people, and it's just kind of become this thing that, like, when we all get together, it's just something like we remember, I guess. And, uh, so, Blake, so, did you know this was going to happen? So, yeah. what happened? I actually <laughs> didn't want it to happen at first. It was on our. Um, now the truth comes out. Yeah, it's all, that's also my fault. <laughs> um, so, it was on our do not playlist because he was like, "My mom's gonna be there. Like, she doesn't need to see this." And blah blah blah. And um, but then we got to the wedding, and all of his friends kept coming up to me asking when we were gonna do it, and I was like, "No, he doesn't want to." So as the night went on, um, they kind of broke him down. And then I went so up for our listeners, though, could you tell them what happened during this dance so they know? Since some people are just listening, they're not going to see the photos or <laughs> anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So picture, I don't know, how many of us were there? Like, Twelve guys in a big circle with their arms wrapped around each other. And at the beginning of the song, everyone drops to their boxer shorts and we just sing along. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted him to explain it instead of me trying to. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So, so while you're here, I'd like to know what's your favorite memory from from your wedding day. Um, that's a tough one. I have a hard time picking favorite things. It's well, yeah. what's your top three then? Um, I would say a top one would be just at the ceremony, just sitting with Blake. Um, kind of enjoying that moment. Um, and then at the reception, it was just like so great to, to talk to everyone. Like I remember so many little like conversations I had with people that it just been such a long time since we seen. And it, it just felt great to have like, um, you know, it's like everyone is there for you. And we had so many people. Um, and I don't know, we just felt really loved. I think it was also because there was the COVID, the biggest part of COVID was between our engagement and our wedding. So like he has two big Christmas parties where there's like 50 people at each party and like they canceled both of them because of COVID. He hadn't seen these people in like a year, year and a half. So it really was more than a wedding. It was like a reunion. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, I would also like to get your take on um, the honeymoon. But before we jump ahead, if you want to stick with us through the rest of it, you can. If you want to go off, we can call you back in in a few minutes. Or Blake can tell you you can go. He's oh, wait, I'm going up here. He's pulling up a chair. Okay. So, okay. So we talked about the grand entrance. What else went on during your reception that you want to talk about? Did you do other special dances that – involved keeping the clothes on <laughs> <laughs> we did did you do merit dances did you all this did you all choose to do that the which ones um like dances with your parents yes <laughs> yes we did um i did a dance with my dad if you keep scrolling you'll find it it's as about as um emotional as the first look pictures he did one with his mom um, we did the Generations dance, which was actually one of my favorites. His who? Yeah, I honestly didn't know who was going to win the Generations dance, and it was uh, one of my aunts and uncles. Had been married the longest. Yeah. How long was it? Do you remember how long they'd been married? It was like 50 years or something like that. Wow. Did they, did they... Had been married longer, but they... They left before it got to that point. Before it got. Well, I'm glad that they could be there with you, though. Mm -hmm. um, did they give you a piece of advice? Yes. 
with, as that part of it. People talk about that they really love that moment when somebody can share that advice. Oh, yeah. And it was obviously his uncle gave a, some funny advice and then his aunt was gave like actually really good mm-hmm. advice. Yeah, Sharon, some serious advice. Sharon, yeah, there. that's not Sharon. Oh, oh, sorry. I, well, Sharon's husband, I think, predicted it like perfectly. He he was the DJ. And, oh, Ron, that yeah. Ron yeah. DJ. Okay, yes, that's he talks about doing that. That's one of his favorite things to do. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Ron keeps it going too. He, he does. He's a good guy. He was great. He was so good. Yes. So. um Let's talk about, were, did you, were you hands-on in the picking of the food? <laughs> um, yeah. This is for both of you all. Mm-hmm. So he, we only, this was also something with COVID. Um, we picked Southern Ladies Catering, which um, Sharon recommended. And we did like, um, well, what should have been like an in-person taste test was a to-go containers. Um she let us try like a meat um, and two sides. And then it was enough for like six people. So we got to take it home to my house um, with my mom and my dad and all eat it together. Um, so that was our like taste test. And then for cake, we did um, Heitzman's and we did like a three tiered cake, but then we had four sheet cakes uh, of other flavors. Um, with our, like, you couldn't decide which ones to get. I mean, they had nine flavors. We picked seven. <laughs> as many as they would let us. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, so what did you all do for your food? Did you go with a certain theme? Um, we did um, barbecue, and I had these little, um, I don't want to, oh, paper bags that says, said um i do barbecue with our names on it and our date and then we put the utensils in those and those were at the head of the um buffet so super super laid back yeah yeah going back to your anniversary or generation dance that's the first time and i've been around uh, sharon for a long time i've never heard it called a generation dance is that what sharon called it that's what sharon and ron called it yeah they called it that together you know it as probably the anniversary, anniversary dance. dance yeah. I think yeah. they're more calling it generation dance. I like now. that better, actually. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's so neat to people in your family. You might not realize how long they've been married. I had no idea about his aunt and uncle. We, I mean, both of us together, we sat there and like brainstormed when we when we talked to Ron. We're like, okay, who would who would win this? And we both had no idea. I mean, absolutely none. So did you choose to do that over the, the traditional toss bouquet? We did, or did all you do of the it. Toss yeah, you we did, did it all. Okay, did it all. All right. So you yeah. did the bouquet and garter. Mm-hmm. Well, all we're right. hearing. Well, we're hearing that some people are not doing that, but they're using the toss bouquet to give to whoever ends up do with the generations dance or anniversary right. dance. Right. So have I have not heard of that. That's awesome. Yeah, we have some friends who decided against the bouquet toss, but I say I'm traditional, but then, you know, he dropped, they all dropped their pants at our wedding. So, but I do feel like I am very traditional. So I wanted to do all of the traditional activities except for that one. Well, you did traditional with a spin. That's true. That's true. You have to, you have to stand out somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some new traditions. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I love the market lights. Uh, absolutely. It just gives it another touch at the refinery, Mike. I know you mm-hmm. love my market okay. lights too. Okay. So, oh yeah, we have, in our backyard. we have some in our backyard that we're hanging up. I mean, I just like them in general. And when I walked in um, and we saw it, I was like, we have, we have to have these. I mean, especially at night with it. And then we had, you put so many candles on the tables and it just kind of, yeah, very trendy and very popular right now. Alex, I'm looking at pictures, too, and I see that you have some fun socks on. So did all your groomsmen have a different kind of socks on, or were they? I mean, we that's did. very trendy we right now, having these wild-looking socks. Yeah, we did all the same socks, but they were pretty fun. Yeah, I think that's cool. Now, do you, did you just do this for your wedding, or are you into different socks all the time? Because some guys love doing the different socks. 
Yeah, I, I'm pretty basic when it comes to socks, but I know what you're talking about. A lot of people, you know, have all different kinds. So he lived on the edge just for the wedding day. He did. Yeah. He mm-hmm. laid he did. it all out there. Literally. He did. Okay. So how did you wrap up your evening? How did you choose, you know, when, when it was getting closer to the end of it, how did you choose kind of to wrap up the event? We didn't really have like an exit. Um, our, so you picked it. Oh, um, well, it was something that our DJ suggested to us and Sharon um, to like have everyone in a big circle and do a last song. Um, yes. And we did uh, Friends in Low Places, which I'd never seen that done at a wedding before. But we love that really song. Cool. Yeah. So it was really cool. And then, you know, we sang the song and the lights came on and that was it. You know, we want, I mean, I uh, I remember it was a couple weeks before the wedding and my dad and Sharon were like, how are you getting back to the hotel that night? And I was like, I mean, we can just Uber. And he was like, you're not taking an Uber from your wedding. And I was like, but it's efficient and uh, it doesn't cost a lot of money and it'll be the two of us. Like, it doesn't matter. And they were like, no, that's absolutely not happening. So that was the one thing that I didn't plan that apparently I really should have because my dad was and Sharon, they were not having it. Yeah. So they booked us a bus. <laughs> a bus. A bus. <laughs> so it's just the two of you on the bus or did your wedding party go with you? Our wedding party went with us. Our okay. Special, okay. Yeah. Our special moment was the first look because it was just my – the photographer, us, and then my dad came down for his first look. But that was really the time that we had together. Gotcha. Well, and I'll tell you, you know, I I know some people are doing these exits and they're really doing stuff there, but I've heard people that do exits, they turn around and come back in. Come back in and party more. Yeah. They want to be with people. They don't want to just get in a car and leave. And um, so I've heard that too. And I've seen some amazing exits. But I've heard a lot of them go right back in. Yep. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I know that uh, Ron has done that before with kind of like a closing song. And I think that's such a great way to end together as family. You know, it just really summarizes that entire day of unity. Oh, yeah. And the people that are there till the end with you, you know, are going to stick it out during your the rest of your relationship and the life you have together. So, I mean, I remember everyone that was there in that moment. And that was, that was another special thing that wasn't necessarily too big, didn't cost a lot of money. It was just memorable um, and it's very special. So when did you leave on your honeymoon? Monday morning. There was, yeah, we were not leaving. I know Katie, Katie left the next day. I don't even know if she slept, but I, yeah, we left Monday morning. But that's interesting you bring that up because – we are hearing people are waiting a day or two before they leave. Some people are even doing, Sharon called it before, like a, a lunch, lunch or a brunch, or a brunch the next day, like for family going back out of town. So I'm glad that you said something. So you all waited a day to to leave. We, so, we, since we're from Lexington, we, um, we had to go get the gifts. Um, Sharon had us do the best idea. The most redneck idea was the renting the U Haul for. I know what she was going to say. Yes. Oh my gosh, it was so smart. I'm like, I don't know how I didn't think of this. This is brilliant. And so we. I had- mean, it was absolutely. I, you almost want to video a, a wedding when there's not. And people are shoving stuff in people's cars. You've you got drunk people it. that you aren't even going to drive, but they were supposed to take the stuff home. Mm-hmm. It is a hot mess. And I'm so glad I got to say that since Sharon's not here. Yeah. She'd say, honey, it's more than a hot mess, is what Sharon would say. <laughs> oh, I mean, Because, she- my gosh, it can take you forever. But the amount of people that it takes you to shove it all in the cars. When Sharon first said that to me, right after I met her, I was like, that is genius. That is one of the best wedding tips I've ever heard. Uh, unreal. And, and you know, you order all of this alcohol for your wedding. And you people are like, oh, you always get more than you think you'll need. And I'm like, no, we have like 200 people. It'll we'll ha- We won't have any more. And, like, we had so 
much extra that we had to take back the next day and got money back for. But I mean, you don't think about that. So who would take all of the alcohol and put it in their car? <laughs> well, and it's so much more than gifts. Mike, we've talked about sometimes you have decor, you have linen or, you know, depending on what you're doing depending with your rentals and so much. So I'm glad you said something about that. So you g- gave a day in between before you left for your honeymoon. Now we get to dive into this fun topic. Oh, so yeah. you let him have one thing that he could plan. He asked, he said, we were in the middle of like wedding planning and he was like, okay, but I want one thing on myself. And he picked that. Yeah. It's really the only thing I wanted to plan. <laughs> I love planning. Well, you picked one of my favorite places. So kudos to you. Yeah. Uh, I've been there, but I'm going to let you go ahead. How did it all come about? Yeah. So really she kind of picked the place, um, but I like, I like, you know, planning all the nuts and bolts of it and figuring out how we're going to make it happen. Um, and so I travel a lot for work. So I'd been banking up points with different hotels and airlines and stuff for a few years. And so we were trying to figure out like, you know, what are the best resorts we can stay at for the least amount of money. Um, and so we spent five days in Kauai and four days in Maui um and it was amazing he we, had we stayed at like really really nice resorts um we we're like uh, beachfront at both of them um yeah, did you cool. have a uh a uh, travel, travel agent. agent help you or did you no, explore it on it. your own yeah um he booked it i mean he had two guidebooks one for maui one for Kauai, and He had like highlighted things we needed to do, places we need to eat, um, booked it all through all the points and, you know, with different credit cards and um, things like that. I mean, I remember getting there and they're like, oh, you're Mr. Fackler. And (laughs) and you're like, oh, what are you? Like, cream of the crop here? And they're like, here's your free water bottle and and champagne and glasses. Would you like an upgraded room and, you know, all this stuff? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, who did I marry? How does this happen? (laughs) That's what went through my mind. It's like, okay, you've married. Now what do you find out? (laughs) I'm like, this, this, yeah, he was, I mean, a very a VIP at these both these places. So we got mm-hmm. moved from like a a street view to an ocean view room. And I'm like, I don't know how this happened, but I'm not questioning it. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. So she shared with us earlier that you all did some may have been even before we were recording that um, you all did some excursions and things like that in both places. Yes, we did. Um, so when we were in Kauai. Uh, the big excursion that we did um, was a catamaran ride along the Nepali coast. It's like a famous coastline um, next to... It's the one that they shoot movies at, right? But you yeah. cannot get to it on foot. Exactly. You have to boat in so they don't have to worry about... It's, it's um, very private, I guess I should say. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I remember them telling us about that. So yeah. I couldn't remember the name of it. Yeah. Think like Jurassic Park and Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, it's like a dramatic coastline. There's like 3,000 foot mountains right up against the ocean. It was beautiful. Um, and then we got to snorkel with sea turtles on that same trip. Um, what else? What if there's something different about being out in the open water, uh, snorkeling or swimming with them, it's uh, gosh, if you get seasick, it might not be the thing you want to sign up for, but. Well, we, I scared my dad because we went snorkeling right where, what's her name? Um, Beth, Bethany? Uh, yeah, Bethany, I forget her last name, but it's a famous surfer. Um, Who lost her arm. Um, in a shark attack in like that, on that oh, beach. Bethany yeah. Hamilton. Yeah. She, so there's this thing called like the lion's jaw or something and it's two rocks right before you go snorkeling she went through there and her arm got um bitten off and we were snorkeling right there 
Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can remember when I went, we went past Princeton, I think it was, mm-hmm. and there was a state park and you could snorkel on your own. And as you went out over the reef, it just dropped off hundreds. I mean, it was very, very deep. Yeah. And when you, I wouldn't go over it, but I would get to where I could see over it. And it was absolutely amazing. And like you said, it, it was, everything was picturesque. It, it's, almost doesn't it doesn't seem real or so to speak and i can remember the water and all of that stuff was just breathtaking um it was absolutely beautiful i mean the colors are brighter there i mean it just looks like some kind of painting i mean we went um in maui we went hiking on a waterfall hike we got to see like three or four different waterfalls we did the road to Hana all the way around. Um, that's my favorite. I've done that, and that is that. It's it's a long day, but I mean, it's 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 worth it. Oh, Absolutely. it's so worth it. Yeah. Well, here's where I here's one thing that just popped in my mind. A big takeaway from this: how important it is to plan out your honeymoon if there's things you want to do. If you want to do excursions and things like that. It's not like you're there forever. You're there for a set number of days. But he put a lot of time and thought into planning it out and being able to do things. Um, and for all you grooms out there need to listen up. Listen up. But also, <laughs> exactly. he possibly even save some money in things, like you mentioned, by actually planning it out and doing that kind of stuff. And definitely with Good job. COVID. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so like I joined some Facebook groups about Hawaii travel. um, And the big thing that they were saying is like, if you don't book it before you leave, then you you might not have a decent place to go eat dinner. um, Or you not might not be able to do any excursions, um, just because of how the COVID restrictions were at the time with reduced capacity. So we had it all planned out. And it was amazing. So it definitely paid off. That's awesome. It was, I mean, I'm so glad he would come in here and sit down and talk to us because I think this just showcases that you did speak up and you did say you wanted something to yourself to plan and be able to take care of. And it's okay that you do that. Um, Communication is key. I feel like we talk about it in so many episodes before you get married, during the wedding, afterwards, but you communicated that that was something that was important to you. And I think that's a, that's a great message to put out there to everybody. But Blake, I want to say one more thing. I want to, you know, you, I have done your wedding. I've done Katie's wedding. There was another girl that is in your little pod that, that I did her wedding. <laughs> in their little pod. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's been really exciting to work with three different girls that their vision is totally different than each other's. And you all are so close because, I mean, I've been to a few weddings that you and Alex has been at, and, and I've seen you all there. And I think it's great that you're just going through a time in your life where everybody's getting married. And I'm sure you've got more weddings to go to, correct? We, or hopefully we, everybody does. This weekend, actually, yes. <laughs> How many have, more do you have to go after that? <laughs> we have two left, but that total this year would make – 10 or 11 total. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Yeah. Now, were some of those supposed to be last year? Yeah, three of them were supposed to be last year. Um, Only three of them. Oh, wow. wow. Three of them. Yeah, we're just, I mean. Yeah. It's been a fun year. It's been a really fun year. And and we have more next year. We already have three booked for next year. So <laughs> we're, we're ready. I mean, it, it's such an exciting time getting to share that with your friends, like seeing Katie. I mean, I was bawling watching her go down the aisle. I mean, and getting to plan alongside her too, like because she was one of Sharon's girls too. <laughs> um, we like, we went hand in hand. I'm like, did you do this? Did you book this yet? And she's like, no, I'm working on it. Like just, <laughs> just getting to go through that well, together is really cool. It's also so nice to be able to bounce ideas off each other. What worked, what didn't work. It's so invaluable that other people have experienced that and you're at different stages Mm -hmm. Um, because 
let's also admit that the wedding in that day is phenomenal, but it's also going into married life together Mm -hmm. um, and whatever else that entails down the road. Um, That's really special that there's so many of you all that are close together Mm -hmm. that are experiencing that at the same time. Oh yeah. I mean, there's, and there's little details that you don't think about or well, you, you do spend too much time thinking about that really don't matter. Like I remember being like, okay, I need to whiten my teeth and be tan and go do this and that. And it's like, it didn't matter. I didn't care the day of. Like, it, <laughs> None of that stuff. I mean, like, first of all, you can touch everything up. But I told Katie, I was like, okay, don't worry about this. Do worry about this. I mean, I remember something that I was stressed about that he really wasn't was like people cancel the week of like, People will say yes to coming and then they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't make it. Like I had people text me the day of and he's like, no big deal, you know, like don't sweat it. And then I was and it was nice to have him. But well, the main thing is at the end of the day, you all got married. That was why you were there. That's why we were all there. So that's the most important thing. Doesn't matter who's there or not there. The people that were supposed to be there that day was there or there. That's literally what he told me. So there are some, some things you're meant to sweat and some things you're not. And so it's nice to be able to give pass that advice on. Well, can, I, I mean, let me give me a name. So we're talking about Katie and we're talking about this person and that person. And this. Blake, thank you for spending so much time and Alex for spending so much time. A lot of we have a lot of followers and a lot of listeners And it seems as if the feedback we're getting from people is they hang on so many words and so many things we've talked about. And I think it's so important to talk to couples, you know, after their wedding so they can hear from the source, not just from professionals that work in that industry, but to hear you say, don't sweat the small stuff and just be there and enjoy it be present. It's so important for us to help get the word out and your experience. Share that with others because in this hour of this recording, I can't begin to tell you how many takeaways that this is going to help so many other people down the line. So we really appreciate you taking time to talk to us. And on behalf of all those other people that you're going to help down the line, both of you all, I tell you that will mean a lot to a lot of people. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't even reach out. Oh, my goodness. Well, it means a lot that of all brides you all have, it really means a lot that you um, asked us to be here, and we wouldn't be anywhere else today. And, Alex, I'm sorry we didn't plan ahead to have you on here. You know, a lot of times, Mike, I think it just pops in our mind because you're used to working with the bride or one person of the couple. So Alex, we've learned something. We will make sure to invite the the couples. The couple, yes. Yes, Mr. and Mrs. However, um, to take part in in uh, sharing with us. So thank you all so much. Thank you for letting us share some of your pictures. Absolutely beautiful. And um, all I can say is um, keep reminding her about what she did with that cake. <laughs> no, I thought he forgot by now. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you.